What's going on, everybody? It is April 15th, Sunday NBA basketball. We've got the other four games in the first round. Uh, yesterday didn't go super well. Uh, Raptors somehow won, scored a ton, and simultaneously played terrible. Um, at least Lowry and DeRozan. So uh, that sort of sunk my battleship right out of the gate. But four more games today, so let's dig in. Uh, first game up, Boston Celtics hosting the Milwaukee Bucks. Celtics four-point favorites at home, 102.75 implied total, which is fifth. Uh, not a ton to like here for the Celtics. Um, just not the, like, this is my least favorite game from a fantasy perspective. Uh, Horford's all right at uh, 7,400 on FanDuel. He's a much better play on DK, only 6,000. I think that's... A pretty nice price. He should be pretty popular there. Um, like Jalen Brown's fine. Uh, Jason Tatum's fine. It's just they're not that. It's I don't love the offensive upside of this team. Fifth, like I just it just doesn't feel like a a spot that's gonna have a ton of guys pop off. Rozier's price is not something I love. If I thought Marcus Morris was going to play like crazy minutes, I might go that direction, but I don't. So basically, focus on Horford, particularly on DK, where he's 6,000. You can fit him in in all sorts of ways. And then uh, just little bits of Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. For the Bucks, uh 98.75 implied total. It's dead last for the slate. Um... You know, Celtics defense is number one in basketball, so should be should come as no surprise. Uh, Bledsoe, eighty six hundred on Fanduel, perfectly fine price if you need to play him. But seventy one hundred on DK is just downright insane. Um, you should absolutely be having Eric Bledsoe in your lineups on uh, on DraftKings. It's really hard to avoid it, and you shouldn't avoid it. Uh, Middleton, eighty two hundred on Fanduel. You know, I can do without it. Uh, 6,800 on DK, I'm much more likely to do it. Bledsoe for me, far and away over Middleton, but uh, Middleton still looks good. And then Giannis, 11,000 on FanDuel, 10-2 on DK. Uh, perfectly fine with having some Giannis. Uh, I wouldn't go crazy. Uh, there's just not enough value out there to like make it really easy to fit him in. Um, and I don't really love the matchup all that much. 10-2 on DK, uh, you know, I could take it or leave it. Um, not... A terribly large amount of interest in Jabari, uh, and I can't imagine having much Henson. So for me, it's an overwhelming amount of Bledsoe, particularly on DK, and just like a smattering of Middleton and Giannis. Uh, Cavs and Pacers. Cavs, 109.5 implied total, which is second. They are five and a half point favorites uh, over Indiana. Braun is 12 1, 11 5 on DK. I'm more than okay with this one. Uh, I like Braun a lot here. That implied total looks great, and it's the playoffs. So he's probably just going to go about doing his normal, I'm going to average 35, 9, and 9 or something in the playoffs. Um, so I really like LeBron tonight. Uh, not the biggest Jeff Green fan in the world. He should get like the lion's share of minutes um, while he's out there, but eh, I'll pass. Could go off. Uh 4,600 or 4,500, not the like, not the most ridiculous price to have for Jeff Green, but I just I don't see the the real upside. Uh, George Hill is someone that I would be looking at. 4,000 on Fanduel, uh, I think is a is an okay price if you're looking for a uh, a guard punt play. GPPs, uh, of course. Um, Rodney Hood, sort of the same situation. I want to like love more, but I think that he's just priced like spot on to where he needs to be. Um, Eighty one hundred on Fanduel, seventy six hundred on DK. I'll have a marginal amount. Uh, LeBron is the is the key play coming out of Cleveland, and then it's Hill and Hood for like GPP stuff. Uh, for the Pacers, one hundred three implied total, which is fourth. Um, they've got Oladipo at 9,500, um, 8,600 on DK. I actually like that a lot. 
I don't have a ton of fear of Cavs D, obviously. And uh, I feel like Oladipo is going to be pretty jazzed for this one. So that's a direction that I would want to go. Um, I, I, one of my favorite guard plays on the board. Like, just in a general sense. not in, Like, Bledsoe on DK is awesome because of, you know, what I think is a dramatically wrong price. Um, I think Oladipo's priced pretty much where he should be, but I think there's a lot of upside in that number for a playoff game for him. Uh, Bojan, not a guy that I'm loving today. Uh, he would be a GPP-only guy for me. Darren Collison, though, uh, 5,500 on FanDuel. I think that's a perfectly acceptable value for um, you know a mid-tier point guard. And then 5,200 on DK is just slightly worse, basically. So Oladipo, for me, is my main focus. I would have expected to like Miles Turner a bit more than I do. Um, 5,400 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK. I think he's a nice GPP center. Um, he can greatly exceed like the 27 points that he needs to hit value. Rockets and T-Wolves, uh, 114 implied total for the Rockets. That is first. They are 11.5 point favorites at home. Um, not expecting to see Ryan Anderson, no Luke Mba, Mute. Uh, not going to matter, really. Number one implied total. Like, with a bullet, 4.5 points over the Cavs' second one. Um, I have very little faith in the Wolves in this series. Uh, Harden at 11-7, 11-1 on DK. It's Harden not to love that one. Uh, bad, bad joke. Uh, Gordon's fine. Uh, I'd much prefer him on DK than on FanDuel. 5,900 is uh, pretty pricey. Um, I don't love taking Tucker or Ariza. They would both be like GPP only low on guys for me. Paul, 9,000. 8100 on DK, perfectly fine with that, particularly the DK price, but Harden is the crown jewel here. I know you'll need um, some sort of value plays, though. Uh, someone asked me about Nene for today. Uh, not a ton of interest there. Um, if I needed to take someone from this game, like priority number one, at least on DK, it would be Harden. Um, otherwise... I don't really love Capella here, but I feel like he went off on Minnesota earlier this year. Am I remembering that correctly? Somebody's shouting at the screen. No. Yeah. 42 and 46. Mm, yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, uh, Capella looks like a pretty nice play on DK. Uh, 6,400. Um, Houston looks a lot better on DraftKings than they do on FanDuel unfortunately. Wolves, 102.5 implied total, which is sixth. Um, I don't hate this. Wiggins, um, 6,300 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. I think that's a reasonable range for him. Um, I, I don't love him by any means, but I think that he makes for an interesting GPP uh, upside play. Uh, Teague looks okay at 7,300, 6,500 on DK. I think both of those are feasible prices. Um, the guy that I would want the most here, though, is Jimmy Butler. 8,700 on FanDuel, 7,800 on DK. I really like that price point. Um, you know, I think Butler's going to have something to prove here. Uh, wants to show, I, I honestly think, wants to show that it's his team. Um, so I think this is a big game for Butler. Uh, I would like to focus on him. Um, from a fantasy perspective. And then Towns, 10-5 on FanDuel, 9,600 on DK. Uh, I'll take whatever comes up for him. I'm relatively indifferent uh, about his perform. Like, I, I, yeah, I don't feel anything one way or the other for Towns. He can have a monster game, and we can remember it as, like, the game that Carl... Anthony Towns arrived, but eh. I'd, I'd much rather Butler. Final game, Thunder and Jazz. Uh, Thunder, three and a half point favorites at home. 104.75 implied total for the Thunder. Uh, 
this is the game that I want to see the most. Just Thunder, you know, Steven Adams, monstrous defensively, getting uh, him and Gobert, just an, what an interesting battle. Jazz team, incredible defenders, you know, trying to limit Russ and Paul George. I think it's just really fun. Um, Paul George, 7,900 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DK. It's not a bad price. Obviously, no problem for George getting up into the 50s. So uh, he's someone that I would want to target a little bit. He might fall into a range that's tricky from a from a salary perspective. I'm anxious to see how it pops out um, when we throw everything into the optimizer. Russ, 11-9, 11-2 on DK. Uh, he wouldn't be my first choice of studs. Like, I would rather have LeBron. I think that feels a little bit safer. Um, I just wouldn't. I don't like going up against the Jazz all that much. Uh, especially, they're, I think they're going to be pretty jacked up. So, Russ isn't my favorite play. He might come up just from a positional standpoint. It's a little bit easier to find some point guard value today. Uh, Corey Brewer, not for me. Steven Adams, 6,300 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. I think he looks pretty nice as a center option um, if you don't want to pay up. Uh, Jazz, not super um, great defensively against centers oddly enough their defense as a whole is great but you know Gobert makes the the entirety of the defense better it doesn't necessarily mean he's going to just stop a center um so it all makes that all makes sense in my head uh so I don't have much problem having some uh Steven Adams Mello at 5,000 you know if you want to have Mello it's GPP only um, I don't think the mellow that everybody wants is uh, coming back anytime soon, but I get it as a GPP play. Final team, Utah Jazz. 101.25 implied total, which is 7th. Um, I'm not surprised that my numbers are going crazy about Donovan Mitchell. They have been all year. Uh, 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DK. What's his just yearly performance? So it'd be 38.6. Yeah, so that's... I don't mind that at all. I'm just, like, whispering to myself like I'm not even in the middle of this. Uh, I like Donovan Mitchell. Um, I think he's going to be in for a rude awakening, so I would only uh, be looking at him in a GPP setting. Um, I feel like he, his average performance is not going to be the direction this goes. It's either going to be something really not good or something really awesome. Uh, I've, I'm, I'm not seeing the middle ground here, which is it's just, that's a preposterous way to, to look at stuff like that. But I don't know. That's just my feel. Rudy Gobert, though, 8500 on FanDuel. Perfectly acceptable price. I would do that in a heartbeat. Not a problem paying that. 7000 on DK? Yeah, I'm in for that. Uh, Gobert at 7000 is just an exceptional bargain. Uh, I expect him to pop up in a ton of lineups when we crunch for DK. Uh, same scenario for Rubio, 6,500, love that price point on FanDuel, 5,900, love it even more. Um, Jazz are gonna be very, very popular in this DK crunch that we do. Um, I don't have much interest in Ingles at 7,000, 6,100 is a little bit more palatable. Uh, Crowder, just not the type of guy that I would wanna have outside of like, you know, a few bullets from a GPP. And favors isn't for me. But I'm really anxious to see. I'm, I'm, I'd am i rather run DK to start. I might just play on DK just to roster all those Jazz guys. I'm secretly riding for the Jazz this year. Well, I guess it's not a secret anymore, so. Alrighty, 10 rando each. See what we get. A lot of Horford, a lot of Rubio, a lot of Gobert, a lot of Bledsoe. A lot of interest from me. Let's sort these. I'm going, I want those first four guys. So let's go Horford, Rubio, Gobert, Bledsoe. We'll see where we go from there. 34 more lineups out of the top 100. I love it. Let's go look to DK. Can we get to Harden? I bet that makes, uh, we gotta make some concessions. Yeah, not gonna do that if it's Jeremy Grant. 
Um, so Chris Paul showed up a ton. That might be a direction to go. Oladipo, he's gettable in 25, so whoop. Boom, 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 boom. Where's the little depot hiding? There it is. Yeah, now we're now we're talking. I wouldn't want it to be the Corey Brewer lineups. I'd entertain that one. I think this one will be my favorite. Collison, Bledsoe, Crowder, Horford, Gobert, Rubio, Wiggins, Oladipo. I could see that being a pretty nice lineup. Man, pricing is wild there. Uh, let's grab FanDuel. Boom. 10% rando. Hi, honey. Yeah, I'm recording. <laughs> Shout out to the wife. All right. 10 random for FanDuel. That's way more Rubio than I was expecting. I'm not surprised by the Donovan Mitchell. I do want to go Steven Adams. I feel like that price is really nice on FanDuel. Wow. Who do I like more, Rubio or Mitchell? It's probably Rubio. I feel like I need to get away from Mitchell today. Um, where's Braun, Braun? Let's look at these. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Who do we like the most here? These are all Ariza. Do I prefer PJ Tucker or Tatum? Yeah, probably. No, I think if this if I was throwing like a single bullet into a GPP, it might be this one: Rubio, Collis, and Oladipo, Jalen Brown, LeBron, Ariza, Anthony Crowder, Adams. I would roll the dice on that. It's going to be a tricky build. I, I think LeBron is tough to get to today. Like if I go to Butler instead, that probably opens up so much more. Oh man, let's look at Collison. Yeah, what do these look like? I'd be much more likely to have that line up there. Rubio, Collison, Harden. I don't want to, I'd prefer to swap out to someone else other than Mitchell. Um, I like him, but I don't want to do him and Rubio together. Man, it's going to be fun. I love, I love the NBA. That's it, guys. Um,. I'll probably only do NBA videos for games with three slates. Otherwise, it's just two games is just not enough, in my opinion. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Uh, check out Osmo.com for my projections, um, Osmo's rankings for FanDuel and DraftKings, mine both as well, uh, Slam Dunks article. Uh, check that out. Um, you probably beat me in our single entry contest or our single game contest. I was in the middle of the pack. Um, needed to have more of the Pelican side of it. Uh, Rondo in particular didn't have him. So congrats to those who did well in that tournament. And um, I guess I'll see you uh, later on in the week. Bye-bye.